President Ramaphosa, the president of the ANC, is delivering an address at the ANC's NEC meeting taking place on the east of Johannesburg. Let's take you there live. Voting districts in our country. We decided that our renewal program should focus on rebuilding branches so that they become vibrant branches and activist branches with clear programs of action that address the interests of our people. In doing this, we are guided by the words of Amir Cabral, who famously asserted in 1965 that we must always bear in mind that the people are not fighting for ideas, for things that are in anyone's head. They are fighting to win material benefits, to live better and in peace, to see their lives go forward, to guarantee the future of their children. And he said this in his well-known treatise which said, tell no lies, claim no easy victories. Accordingly, the NEC resolved that our program to build ANC branches must ground them in the everyday struggles of ordinary South Africans to overcome poverty and inequality and to create inclusive local economic development and jobs in communities. The ANC and the ANC Women Youth League branches must support young people to identify opportunities for further study, for internships, and for work opportunities offered by government and the private sector. ANC branches must work actively to support the provision of affordable services and payment for use of water and electricity. They should promote ongoing maintenance and protection of local public infrastructure. The NEC in its work with branches will ensure that they work with the local government and civil society to promote clean and green communities with food gardens and parks for children to play in. Our branches must promote healthy lifestyles and community cohesion through getting members of our communities to participate in sports, arts and culture so we can combat gangsterism, drug and alcohol abuse. ANC branches must work with school governing bodies to ensure that quality learning and teaching does take place in our schools. Our branches must mobilize parents to ensure children are in school on time and that they should do their homework. ANC branches must work with community health workers and other social practitioners to identify vulnerable families and elderly individuals who need support and assistance from public health services. There are ongoing mobile outreach programs by Home Affairs, SASA and the Department of Employment and Labor <clears throat> that are aimed at making services accessible to communities. The NEC agreed that it must be one of the tasks of an ANC branch to mobilize community members to take advantage of all these opportunities that are offered. The NEC resolved that in order to build public participation to encourage accountability and advance democracy, we will ensure that our elected public representatives, namely councillors, members of parliament, members of provincial legislatures, focus on engaging members of the community more actively and closely. 
These public representatives will be required to hold regular public meetings to address matters of local concern, available government services and explain policy matters under consideration at government level and nationally. The NEC emphasized that crime, gangsterism, and gender-based violence and femicide remain priority issues for communities. ANC branches have an important role to play in supporting community policing forums and community safety initiatives to deal with violence and criminality. The NEC decided that as we approach the 16 days of activism, ANC Women's League branches must use this opportunity on gender-based violence and femicide to ensure victims have access to services and are supported in court proceedings. We must also take forward initiatives that conscientize men and boys against toxic masculinity and the use of violence to solve problems. The NEC is determined to build branches that are political, not transactional, or captured for individual career advancement or sectional interests. The NEC's diagnostic report shows that a number of ANC branches have been repurposed for individual and sectional interests that neglect the fundamental tasks of the National Democratic Revolution. And these branches quite often have no life, no standing, no program unity. The NEC reaffirmed that this is not how the ANC Constitution defines the role and function of an ANC branch. The diagnostic report deplored the practice of membership bulk buying to establish branches to nominate delegates to elect leadership at conference level and to elect ward candidates. Accordingly, the NEC welcomed enhanced features of the membership management system, which will mitigate these practices. The NEC emphasized that the to achieve effective branches, renewal must also focus on individual ANC leaders and members. This includes raising the intellectual capacity and enhancing the moral and ethical orientation of ANC leaders and members as well. It is in this context that we will tomorrow launch the ANC Foundation course, the course that will be compulsory for every ANC member, every public representative and leader, starting with members of the National Executive Committee itself. The NEC agreed that the living embodiment of a renewed ANC will be members and leaders who show exemplary conduct in society through their service to the people of our country, through hard work in carrying out their duties, whether in government, in the community, or in the organization, and who will continuously uphold the core values and principles of the African National Congress. In the face of rising populism and other negative tendencies, the NEC agreed that ANC structures will mobilize all South Africans in a campaign to combat the demons of racism, tribalism, sexism, ethnic chauvinism, homophobia, and related intolerances in our country and organization. The NEC resolved that the third element of renewal is about instilling integrity, ethics, and organizational discipline. The Integrity Commission is the custodian of the values and ethics of the African National Congress. 
It must therefore ensure that ANC members and leaders uphold the values and ethics of the organization at all times in their political, public and personal lives. The Commission deals with ethical and political complaints against members and serves as an advisory body to the, ANC, to the NEC on matters affecting the public image and reputation of the ANC. This special NEC considered the important work of the Integrity Commission and adopted amendments to the terms of reference of the Integrity Commission and the Step Aside Guidelines. This will provide greater clarity and focus to the work of the Integrity Commission. The NEC considered all reports of the Integrity Commission for the period 2019 to 2024. The NEC noted that several reports have been implemented whilst others have been overtaken by some events. The NEC directed the Secretary General to process those recommendations that were accepted by the NEC and to provide a report to the Integrity Commission on these matters. The NEC reaffirmed its previous decision that all members who did not present themselves to the Integrity Commission in relation to matters affecting them in the final report of the Zondo Commission must be referred to the National Disciplinary Committee. The NEC directed the Secretary General to expedite the appointment of a panel to deal with appeals or reviews of the findings and or recommendations of the Integrity Commission before the NEC takes a final decision. The NEC agreed to develop a guiding perspective on leadership succession informed by our document through the eye of the needle. The NEC considered this to be of utmost importance in the context of our adopted roadmap to renew the organization. Any leadership contests or lobbying at this point in time is what the NEC regards as a distraction and distracting our focus from the key tasks of the National Democratic Revolution. There will be a time for disciplined discussions as well as engagement on the issues of leadership succession. Now is not that time. In fact, our next national conference is only in 2027 and we are currently in 2024. So there is still a great deal of time to deal with all these matters of leadership. Right now, the ANC must focus on rebuilding organization. It must focus on preparing also for the local government elections in 2026. We are all deeply concerned by recent reports of mass killings in communities and the deaths of several groups of children after consuming certain foodstuffs, particularly near or at their, uh, outside their schools. We welcome the speedy action by the South African Police Service in identifying and arresting some of the alleged perpetrators of mass shootings. We look forward to further arrests and the successful prosecution of those who have committed these heinous crimes. We also welcome the joint actions of several departments under the leadership of the Minister of Health in investigating the cause of the hospitalization and tragic deaths of children due to suspected contaminated food. We particularly commend the recent arrests in this regard and look forward to shortly receiving the full report on the outcome of the work that is being done and recommendations in avoiding further such incidents. The NEC calls on government to move swiftly to adopt regulations 
for the legal operation of spaza shops where a number of his children would have bought some of these foodstuffs. We welcome the appointment of the electoral panel to explore options of how to further strengthen our electoral system. The ANC will make its submission to the panel and obviously share the proposals with our members and the public. The meetings of this National Executive Committee continue to be a really great and wonderful platform of deep and meaningful discussions, discussions that are conducted in a very comradely manner and comradely atmosphere where those who rise to speak and many of them, in fact, almost every member of the NEC who has risen to speak on all the issues that were under discussion, made very rich contributions. And uh, NEC members are clearly showing that they are taking their work and responsibility very seriously. It is for me a real joy to be in meetings of the National Executive Committee. And I want to commend you all, members of the NEC, for participating in the manner that we all do in NEC meetings. Of course, under the very able and effective chairship of the National Chairperson. Thank you very much.